you, you're right. Like a lot of times, you know, when you're when you're running a business, and what we found is a lot of companies they they kind of piecemeal everything. Mm-hmm. They have a person who does their social. They have a web guy. I have a web guy. I have a social girl. I have a PR person. Right. I I utilize you know Canva or I talk to a freelancer. And I'm like, oh, that's great. Right. It sounds like you're saving money. Right. But how much our money are you losing in the long run? Right. Because what we have to do is that it has to be a steward of the brand. Currently, right now, people buy brands, they don't buy products. That's it. They, they, they know the brand delivers on its promise. Right. Like when you said Boeing, right. So you say Boeing, people already have an association. There's images, yep. there's, um, the, the, the traction that they had of a large company or however it is, right? So they, people, over, when they're buying brands and services, there's an association with it, positive or negative, right? Yep. Hello, and welcome to the Generate Your Value podcast. I'm your co-host, Andy McDowell, founder and owner of Generate Your Value, providing self-leadership, leadership, and business coaching services for corporate executives and business owners. And I'm Zach Levy, your other co-host. I run a nationwide financial service business with my wife, Megan. Together, Zach and I have the intention to bring you tips, concepts, ideas, suggestions, stories, and analogies from A to Z, which will help you to grow your personal brand and leadership skills in such a way that joy, happiness, and success, as you define it for yourself, are achieved. We hope to use our gifts, talents, and experiences in business and leadership to generate value in your life. And with that being said, let's move to our topic for today. Hello, and welcome to the Generate Your Value podcast. My name is Andy McDowell, your host for today on the podcast. And you know that phrase, birds of a feather flock together? Well, my guest today is a bird of the feather. And so, Andy, why do you say that? Well, I say that because our guest today loves business. He's a creative, just like myself, you know, photography, music, so forth for myself, for Fritz, our guest. Uh, I'll let him tell a story. and you'll, you'll understand why I call him a creative, right? Comes from the great city of Houston, Texas. So, so Fritz, what uh, what's the feeling around there about the Texans? Uh, you know what? We we you know we're a uh, we're a sports state. Yeah. So we 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 love our teams. We love the Texans. Uh-huh. We love the Astros, right? The Houston Dynamo. So we're we're we really love. All our teams. So it's, you know, it's that passion that we have within the city. Yeah. It's actually um, cook off, rodeo cook off this, uh, this weekend. Okay. So, rodeo this weekend. So you got to be more, you got a, a right? lot of big buckles walking around the city this weekend. Yes. This, this, uh, this actually whole month, you're going to see more cowboys in Houston than you've ever seen <laughs> in the great state of Texas. <laughs> Kind of like bike week in Daytona, right? Instead of motorcycle yeah, hanging around, it's, it's, it's a bunch of horses and uh, and belt buckles. <laughs> yes. So if you do see, if you do see a a wagon trail on the highway, do not be surprised. Yeah. Do not. You know, no one's shocked who lives here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that happens every year. So. Oh. so <laughs> That, that other voice you hear is Fritz Colonnais. Uh Like I said, comes from the great uh, state of Houston, Texas, runs his own media company. And let me read his his bio like I typically do so you have some idea of his background. And then we'll give him an opportunity to kind of fill in the holes for us. Uh, so Fritz is a seasoned executive creator, director, strategist, and brand builder. Uh, which should be no surprise to you if you're a regular listener to... Um, this podcast that's all stuff we love to talk about uh with over 25 years of experience in marketing brand development and creative direction 
He embarked on his journey in communications in design at Pratt, New York, where his passion for art and design flourished, establishing him as the leading force in the industry. Fritz's creative genius signs through in his role as the executive creative director at Retina Media, a full-service branding and marketing agency based in Houston. Under his guidance, Retina Media has revitalized and modernized iconic brands such as the Houston Open, the Historian, Fully Raw Christina, and the Houston Dynamo, which we just mentioned, right? Fritz's dedication to fostering a corporate culture of whatever it takes ensures that clients benefit from Retina Media's dedicated and intelligent processes, resulting in unrivaled marketing solutions. He leads by example spearheading pro bono campaigns to give back to the community and highlight corporate social responsibility. So Fritz, with that being said, thanks for coming on to the podcast, sharing that finite resource called your life time uh, to come spend it with uh, the Generate Your Value community and uh, sharing your wisdom with us today. Uh, Thank you, Andy. I appreciate you having me on the show. You know, I've been a fan for a long time. I, I listen quite often. So it is really great to be on. I appreciate it very much. I can't wait for us to kind of get into it yeah. and really talk about branding, marketing, you know, brand storytelling, you know, the, the challenges of companies, small small companies or large companies, or even personal brand. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. So and, that, and, as, you know, and, as, uh, and I appreciate you listening to the podcast. As you know, my big thing is about the huge overlap between life and business. And so so we'll get into that later in the conversation. I'm a, I have to also mention you have a podcast yourself, right? Yes, I, I, I started a podcast about uh, two months ago, and it, it's just once a month. It is the Marketing Maverick with Fritz. Mm-hmm. So the last Thursday of every month. So feel free to, you know, DM me. I'll send you the information. I'll send anybody the information. So you just register. It's, it's fantastic where you learn a lot about, you know, branding, marketing, but also I bring in, uh, you know, so, some guests that are, you know, leaders within the industry, mm-hmm. whether they're cele- celebrities, whether they've won, you know, uh, challenges, mm-hmm. you know, on TV. Um, business acumen so it's it's going to be a, a interesting ride for the next year yeah so i i look forward to it you know and um well we'll we'll, to the next we'll, we'll put links to the podcast at the bottom of uh my blog post and my website uh, i always put awesome links to websites and other things that the, the the guest is doing out in the world at the bottom of the blog post so people can find yet uh Love from that it. perspective so uh, let's start off like I typically do. Pick a spot in your life timeline and uh, give us the Reader's Digest version of how it is that you got to where you are today. Okay, so I, you know, I'll start. You know, I'm I've been creative since I was I can't you know since I was a a, a little time mm-hmm. right. So you know, like I draw, paint, sculpt. Really, you know, I I have a passion for creativity and art in itself and how artists are always solution driven creators are always solution driven people right so when even as a as a, a a young man you know i had this entrepreneur spirit so i, I remember you know drawing and painting on on apparel and, and people will hire me to do that Right. And as so when I was young, I was always an entrepreneur, but I used my creativity to make money. Right. So that kind of led me into, you know, going, hey, I could really I could do this for a living as a young age. Mm-hmm. Right. It wasn't so far fetched when I saw other people working at nine to five and, you know, jobs that they really didn't love. And I said, well, I'm I'm doing this right now as a kid and I'm doing it really easily and I'm making money, you know, as it. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, for the listening audience, uh, Fritz having some renovation done in his office <laughs> area. So, so we'll have to contend with that a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so then then after that, 
you know, and, and I wasn't really a trained artist, right? I, I grew up in New York. I grew up in the Bronx. I wasn't a trained artist. And I wanted to go to the high school of art and design. And I had to figure out, you know, I had to put a portfolio together. It's like, you know, again, another challenge. Um, so overcame that challenge, understanding how to put a portfolio together, how many pieces. And traditionally, you know, the kids that were going to some of these schools, they had outside training. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know. So I just kind of, I went to the library. <laughs> I did my research. Yep. Right. So where so for anyone who's younger on the younger demo, you know, you, you're gonna have to do research at the library, right? So which was great. So it taught me tenacity, taught me like really if you want something, there's going to there's gonna be challenges in front of you. Mm-hmm. And either you can accept the challenge, you know, go over it, through it, around it, or under it, or stay stagnant. Right. Right. So those are all options in in your own life, but also in the, in the business world. So in the business world, there's always going to be challenges, and that really kind of that helped me leading into and pouring into my creativity and pouring into my my future self. Right. Yeah. Well, we're we're so we're, the- we're kindred spirits in that way because uh, I never went to photography school. Um. I had maybe three months worth of voice training late in my life for my singing. And I taught myself the guitar. Right. And, and so I use them as examples all the time. When I go on other podcasts for interviews and so forth, particularly with the guitar, I use that as an example of self leadership from the perspective of, I think I have something in it within me. I have a desire, have a curiosity and I know I'm not going to be Eddie Van Halen in five minutes, right? I know Mm -hmm. it's going to take some work, but I know the joy and the passion I'm going to get out of it. Going through the process and the experience is going to be so worth it for me. So uh, I just made a promise to myself. I'm going to go spend $250 and buy this guitar. And I'm going to promise myself I'm going to spend 15 minutes with it at least every day. Which is what I what I did, and now now I sing and play guitar with my praise band at church every Sunday. That's fantastic, and you know, in, in everyone's life, we 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 have these goals, right, that we want to achieve, and we don't really look at like the the micro wins mm-hmm. to achieve that goal. We 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 only look at like, hey, I just want the big win. I want to make the home run. I you know I I want to score the the, the goal. Right, I want to land the client, but that's the celebration, right? Mm-hmm. Like these, all of these micro wins, you have to celebrate those, and you have to look forward to them yep. because that's what's going to really help you move through the the days that you don't want to do something, right? And that's you're going to push past through it, and it's going to help pull you through through that, right? So it's really important for business owners or in your life, like hey. I know that this is this big goal over here, but I have to really love, like I have to achieve these little goals to achieve this, this larger goal, right? So how do you get to the top of yeah. the mountain? One step at a time. Yeah, right? I, I, I so, use the eat the elephant example a lot in my coaching, right? To, to learn how to play yes. guitar or, or for you start a business with creativity in mind is like an elephant. And how do you eat it, right? One bite mm-hmm. at a time, and each bite is a micro win in that process. And that's how you have to kind of visualize it and think about it. Uh, it's a process, not uh, like a light switch. It's not an event. Just toggle the switch, and you got a successful business. You got to build it. And it's little micro I mean, wins it, at a time every day or every week to get yourself there. You know, one, one small hack or tip that I, I always use when I'm trying to learn something new. I always learn the lingo first, mm-hmm. right? So if you want to learn how to play the guitar, it's always great to learn the lingo of playing the guitar. Yeah. Because now your mind is not thinking about what do they mean by bass, treble, strum, mm-hmm. you know, they don't the not think your mind, exactly. The so bridge. Your mind is, exactly. So you already know what that means. So 
the learning pop process is a lot faster, right? So I always learn the lingo, then I start to adapt or apply the, the practices throughout. So you know, you know those little knobs at the end of the guitar? Do you mm -hmm. know what they're called? No, I don't play the guitar. Uh, they're, they're get this, they're called tuning machines. Tuning machines. And I was like, whoa. Tuning machines? <laughs> I would have never come up with a name like that for uh, you know, for that device at the end, but that's you know, as you said, learn the lingo. I had to learn the lingo. So if I'm talking to other guitarists in my group or or so forth to have that vocabulary so that we can communicate with each other and talk about uh, the te technicalities exactly. so, of playing a guitar to know that that's called a tuning machine allows me to communicate with the other people. They know what I'm talking about. Exactly. So when we, when we go, you know, talk to a client, we try to learn as much of uh, the, the trade lingo as possible. So it's not as difficult when we're having a conversation and they understand that we understand their business mm -hmm a lot closer than someone else, right? And we can talk to them in their own language. So they're like, okay, you know, they, they understand you know, what we're trying to do in the, the, at least the industry where they've shown, you know, that they're willing to, to learn more than yeah. someone else. Just, just tell them, don't go work in the aviation industry. We had so many acronyms. It's so ridiculous. It take them forever to learn the vocabulary. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so, okay, so uh, creativity came to you naturally, decided, hey, uh, I do this for my own enjoyment, but I can also do it to help others and bring value to others in life by starting the business. So what was it like to start your business? You know, I, um, you know, I, I worked for a, a couple of companies advertising agencies, mm -hmm. in-house, right? And I was very successful. I My mindset was always, you know, Fritz, you, you have to go in and add abundant value. You have to make sure that you know the software inside and out mm -hmm. because that's a creative. The software is a tool. Yeah. And a lot of creatives right now, they, you know, they don't know how to wield the tool. And I always, I always go back to Michelangelo had, you know, the same chisel that someone else had, mm -hmm. right? You know, maybe his, his marble was a higher quality, right? But he had the same amount of minutes in a day, right? He probably had, you know, more challenges than someone else. So, but he's, he's creating works of art that other artists want. Mm -hmm. Right. And well, he know how to, he knew how to wield the chisel better than the next guy. So you have to know how to wield your tool better than the next guy, because if not, you will settle for where you your level of expertise. Right. And then that translates into your, your client. You're not delivering what's in your mind's eye to the client and. Now something inferior that you're like, well, I'm not really happy about that, but they don't know. Yeah. And that's not, you know, I know if I know that they should be, we should deliver something at a higher level than we're going to do it. Right. Right. So, so I, I, I made a point of knowing all the tools for as a, as a designer or a creative at that time inside and out. So I can push the pixels the way I wanted them to be put. Mm -hmm. Right. And I learned, you know, so right now in, in my career, there's very few creatives that can do, you know, three things, right? Or, or, or three components, right? So you have a creative who's really creative, right? So I'm very creative. I'm also very strategic. So I can build the creativity and also use a strategy of how we're going to move this this project in the right direction, mm -hmm. right? Right. So from a strategic standpoint, what are the steps and what's the roadmap? Mm -hmm. So I'm one of the few that I know of that can do that successfully in the creative space and creative industry. Now, take the business acumen, and I understand 
the, the business objective and also able to identify additional revenue streams for our clients that they haven't even thought of. So now you have an individual who leads a team that can do three things very well to help you win in your industry or outpace your competitor very fast, mm -hmm. right? And do it in a creative, strategic, and financial way. So it is, and, I, and I'd love it. I love that. I love showing that there's, these are these other opportunities that we do this roadmap. We're able to execute on not only what you want to achieve, but two or three other revenue streams that you haven't even thought of. Yeah. So when, when I was uh, trying to penetrate or go into a, a new country or a new market at Boeing and sitting down with their FAA, you know, it, it, it'd be different letters, but it was their FAA, the, the organization that's in charge of aviation in the country. I was always trying my hardest to get into the strategic planning process for the government. Because often they were asking us to come in and build a procedure at this airport or build this procedure at this airport. And it just felt like kind of band-aids, right? They're kind of just filling holes. And I was trying to get to a, 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 that win-win of a capacity and efficiency for their organization in terms of flight operations. And I'm like, I got to get in your strategic planning and start from the scratch, right? To, to build that foundation of a new house for you, so to speak, that is then going to bring that kind of result. But we've got to get way back when and and start with a totally different foundation than what you have today. Right now, you're kind of working with antiquated 30, 40, 50 year old technologies, plans, and you're not taking advantage of new technologies in the cockpits of the airplanes. And so forth and so on. And so I want to get as high as possible, so to speak, in your strategic organization to help you out and start building that airspace 2.0, so to speak, to get the results that you're, you're truly looking for. And it sounds to me like you, you try to do the same thing. Get me into your strategic planning process and let me bring my creative skills with marketing and branding and everything else and be a partner, be a partner with you to help you to achieve that. But if you keep me at that kind of middle management or lower, lower tactical side of your business, there's only so much impact I can make on your business if you keep me down there. You, you, you're right. Like a lot of times, you know, when you're, when you're running a business, and what we found is a lot of companies, they, they kind of piecemeal everything. Mm -hmm. They have a person who does their social, they have a web guy, I have a web guy, I have a social girl, I have a PR person, right? I, I utilize, you know, Canva or I talk to a freelancer. And I'm like, oh, that's great, right? It sounds like you're saving money. Right. right. But how much of our money are you losing in the long run? Right? Because what we have to do is that it has to be a steward of the brand. Currently right now, people buy brands, they don't buy products. That's it. They, they, they know the brand delivers on this promise, right? Like when you said Boeing, right? So you say Boeing, people already have an association. There's images, yep. there's um, the, the, the traction that they had of a large company or however it is, right? So they, people, over, when they're buying brands, and services, there's an association with it, positive or negative, yep. right? Yep. So the buying cycle for anything, I don't care what it is, okay, maybe except for like water and sun and sunlight, <laughs> right? But, right? But the buying cycle is in five stages. Number one, awareness, right? So they have to know... You exist. Who you are, exactly. They know who you are. Like the days of... I would build it, they would come, that's not going to happen. Right. Right? So awareness is number one. Number two, findability. So they have to be able to find you. Right? So just because 
don't I love this, right? So they have to be able to find you. Number three, reputation. What does your reputation say about you when you're not around? Mm -hmm. Right? So really important. That's when the conversion happens. Number four, the conversion, right? That's what everybody wants the conversion before they go through the steps of awareness, findability, reputation. And then the last step is advocacy. I bought this product. I service, I love it. Let me go tell somebody yes, about it. Right. right? So everybody, we all want to live between four and five of those steps. But in reality, you, you have to do one through three first before anything mm -hmm. else. Right? So you have to build the awareness. You have to make sure they can find you and you have to start building a strong reputation so you can convert. Right? Mm -hmm. You can sell the first time. If you, if you don't do you can sell the first time. But it's never about the first sale. No, nope. about the second, third, fourth, fifth sale. That is it, right? You'll give me the first time. After that, I'm not coming back. And that happens a lot of times, yep. right? So you'll see, you know, places open up. You'll see restaurants open up with this big hoopla. You go in, you're like, oh, I'm kind of underwhelmed. It's not really exciting. Right? The food wasn't great, right? Or you, or you, you know, you, you download this this online course, and you're like. You know, I kind of knew that already. I kind of, I got lost in the, the, the glitz and the glam, right? But then someone else delivers something to you and you're like, man, this was so much abundant value. I can't wait to tell, you know, a colleague, a friend of mine, you know, so you're inspired, right? So if you're not creating that experience and that inspiration and that abundant value, then whatever your business is, is going to be a, a challenge to kind of break through to the fourth and uh, fifth stage. Right. So again, it's all strategy. It's not just, you know, before we put pen to paper, it's about that strategy first. Right. So there's a, you know, we really think the think tank over here is, is very strong. So, and the, the team is great. Yeah. But, um, when I have clients that are um, looking to launch a business or have a very young business, I kind of ask them, do you have a business plan? If they say yes, I say, can I see it? And, I kind of chuckle to myself when they come out with like a hundred page document. Uh, Cause for me, the beginning is always about flexibility and what assumptions you used in building your strategy that the name of the game after you launch is that flexibility and either proving or disproving your assumptions. Right. So if you're, if you're launching a restaurant and you're not, taking polls or to... stopping by the table, asking how the experience was and the food and gathering that information about who's walking through the door and what their experience is like and so forth. You're not taking the time to prove or disprove your assumptions in your strategy. And if you're starting to disprove a lot of your assumptions, you got to be able to pivot quickly. Exactly. And, you know, pivoting is really important in any business, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the goal is the same. It's just, you, you know, we, we would like to think it's a straight line, like, hey, from A to B, I, I get from A to B and it, it kind of, you know, but it, it goes like this mm -hmm. sometimes, right? Because the market changes, things happen, right? So within the business, there's new learnings, there's new technology that you can adopt to get to the, the destination a lot faster. Yep. Where there's a learning curve, they like, hey, you know, it's going to take us some time to learn this and then kind of move forward, right? Or, we, you know, they, you know, we thought that this was, you know, you thought that this was the right target audience and really it was more, you know, this, this type of a demographic or psychographic, right? So we try, you know, we do a lot of that thinking up front and then there's a lot of testing, right? And we, everyone wants to do, you know, wants to have a silver bullet, but, you know, if, if there were, silver bullets, especially, let's say, with SEO, mm -hmm. if there were silver bullets, the vast majority of people were not, couldn't afford it. So because the top 1,000 will buy all the bullets, right? And it's done. Right? Yeah. So luckily, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, as even as a playing field that it can be online, right? We're being found. Yeah, I, I often talk with my clients about that path to A, a to B, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to short, thinks the most value comes from the shortest distance. How do I get there the fastest? 
right? Just think about my former employer, Boeing, trying to push planes out as fast as they can at that shortest distance to the cash flow. And look where it's gotten them today, right? Mm-hmm. The the real thing is choose choose the path that brings you the most value. How are, how are you capturing or generating value along your path to point B? It may take you a little bit longer, but if you're learning a lot mm-hmm. through that pathway that it puts you in a better spot when you arrive at B, why wouldn't you do that as opposed to the straight, straightest short distance to point B? Yes, that is, you know, and I, I'm I'm going to, segue into to building a brand mm-hmm. right so you know what nike apple michael you know pick a michael a <laughs> michael jackson right. right so you know oprah dubai houston the big apple all of these are either personal brands businesses or personalities and what what you know about them is what they've done very very strategically is they've acquired a slice of your memory Mm -hmm. so when when i said those words to you those brands you associated them with images right video context whether you wanted to or not like if i said michael you know pick a michael and if you thought of Michael Jackson, you know, you're already associating the moonwalk, the glove, mm-hmm. the the mask that he wore. Pepsi. Pre-COVID. Like hair, Pepsi hair, on hair on fire. <laughs> on fire. So he's built a brand, a personal brand that you've already associated images. Mm-hmm. So it's it's acquired a slice of your memory. And that's what's really important when you're building the brand. It's really, how do I acquire a slice of memory for my prospect and my customer that we are the solution we're the only solution for their frustration Mm -hmm. or their pain point Mm -hmm. so we do that very well right so Mm -hmm. identifying what what can we create to acquire that slice of memory in the hearts and minds of the prospect and the customer right and delivering on the awareness, the findability, the reputation. Mm-hmm. So you get the sale and you get the advocacy, right? And branding, especially in today's market, is really important for your personal brand and your business brand. Yeah. So what kind of conversations do you have with your clients centered around who the ideal client is? You know, when I've dealt with like small business clients, particularly if they're brick and mortar, it's like, well, every person that walks through the door has a dollar sign on their chest. Uh, And and it's all yes, 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 yes. When the reality is, as as an owner, you've got to learn when to say no Uh, for your own (laughs) mental health and so forth, as well Mm -hmm. as expenses, time, and other things that come into business. But you got you got an understanding accept, of who your ideal client is and and how to recognize them. And what so what we do is we you know we ask a very a series of of questions and we 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 do a you know a session with our clients to understand who they believe their target audience mm-hmm. right because I want to make sure that you know this is who your target audience is or target audiences and what are you trying to solve for this particular person right so when someone tells us hey our product is for everyone right that's a red flag right like i said before there's only a couple of things that are for everybody sun air water and if you're a mushroom you do not need any sun so or a bat so, or, or a bat, like exactly right so it depends, you know, if even if someone says, hey, I'm opening up a restaurant. So are you a healthy restaurant or, you know, so is it, you know, for business owners, right? Is it for like, this is where I signed the deal. Is it more luxury? Is it has more aesthetics? Is it a restaurant that you want 
you know, Instagram photo shoots for, right? So is it, you know, are you trying to strive to have the best type of, you know, food experience here? So, or is it a quick serve, right? And what does that mean, right? You know, how fast is fast? Like, so, and what is, inex- you know, so when is it expensive? Like, well, what does it expensive or what does, what does inexpensive mean to you as an, as an owner? And what does inexpensive mean to the customer? And, it's the and, same thing. Like, and, well, and where is the value being generated? Is it being generated in the quality of the food? Is it being built in the atmos- the atmosphere of the place? Is it being built from the speediness? You know what? There's different ways exactly. to add value for the customer uh, in, in your restaurant. And are you thinking about it in that way as opposed to go, no, I just want to open a restaurant and serve food. And therefore, I'm going into exactly. business. So I get a lot of business coaches that come to us for branding and marketing. And, you know, they're the vast majority say the same thing who their target audience is. High net worth individuals, high achieving individuals, CEOs, retired athletes. Okay, so really what you're telling me is that you want someone who can pay your fee. That's what you're saying, mm-hmm. right? So if... Ninety percent of your industry is going after the same audience, mm-hmm. right? They're measuring you against everyone else. And let's say ninety percent is a huge number. Let's just say fifty percent, right? So fifty percent of your audience. I mean, fifty percent of your competitors are going after the same audience, right? So, but you really have it. We haven't talked about a psychographic, a demographic, like you just, it was just a broad statement, right? Let's get some awareness in a niche group first, and then let's move it from Mm -hmm. there, right? It's, so let's now. Let's let's build a brand on the niche. Exactly. And then kind of move. And then expand. They grow horizontally or vertically, depending on your strategy. Narrow. And down, right? So, and and that's what most businesses like. Let's not go wide. Let's go narrow, narrow the focus, and let's dr- drill down deep, right? And create a strategy. You know, whether it's online strategy, a social media strategy, right? A content strategy to build the awareness for your brand, and then start peppering in, you know, s- some sales strategies as well. Right. Right. So, and, you know, when we're talking about marketing, everyone's gravitating towards, hey, you know, social, right? Because the the hardest thing that any brand could be is in someone's pocket, right? So, with this great device, right, how do you become relevant in someone's pocket? Right. So they have so much opportunity to go anywhere. Right. So you build your website and your website person designs your website and they show you the website, how it looks on a desktop. 80% of your audience is looking at your website on a phone. phone. So it is not a real, the reality is off. Mm -hmm. Right. So we come in and, you know, whether it's from a uh, consultancy standpoint or a, a brand steward standpoint, like, hey, this is how we want, this is how it should look. So we have to understand how things need to look on a mobile device first than everything else because our audience is on a mobile device. That's it, right? So there's little nuances that when you don't have a, a strategic advisor or or someone like myself who's not going to, Who's 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 going to come in and steward the brand and understand all the assets that you need to build a brand? Right. You're going to have challenges throughout, right? So, I I like to make sure that I have all the right pieces up front first, and then move forward, right? You know, building the plane while it's in the air. I've done that, and it is a challenge, right? But once you've if you've done it often enough. It's not a challenge anymore, but a lot of times folks are trying to build, build everything in the air and, you know, they have a business plan. There's no marketing plan in the business plan, 
right? right. There's no line item, in, you know, at, at all. So, like, how are you going to market it? Well, they're going to come, right? So I'm like, okay, fine. That that sounds like an interesting idea, right? Or, you know, I could go into logos, right? So, you know, and I've won multiple awards for for designing logos. I've won, you know, Addies, Webbies. So I've I've, I've won enough awards, and I, I've had a I've done enough brands to understand how to design a very effective logo. And one thing I always tell, you know, business owners when they're designing, you know, having their, their logo designed, it looks great when it's on the screen, mm-hmm. right? Because it's eight and a half or six inches wide and you can see all the beauty that you want on it, right? So you you, you want like a Pegasus and you see the wings and the feathers and you see the hoof and you see the the flowing of the mm-hmm. tail of the horse, it looks fantastic. It would it. look great on your wall. Hey, you can hang that on the wall. It'd be a nice picture, right? It's a great illustration, right. right? Now we just take that logo and shrink it mm-hmm. to a half of an inch because that's how someone's going to see it. On the phone or the business card or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's going to, so all of that beauty mm-hmm. and that tagline that, you know, you, you, you kind of, you were just like, so insistent on right so to have it in your logo and um now you can't read it yeah um another area i find business owners kind of fall short in is picking the right types of marketing channels um it, it, i've used this analogy before you're watching a football game. What's your favorite part of the football game, right? Is the offense when you score points, right? So a lot of focus on wide receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, scoring points. And so translate to the to business world, that's the product and service and the revenue and the dollars and so forth. And that's where everybody loves to start. And, and nobody likes the expense side. Nobody... Yeah, I need a strong defense, but that's not where all my focus is, right? So on the expense side, they don't start there as their foundation. Like, what's the cost to just hang a shingle outside the door and be in business? And so, therefore, they don't drill up to go, well, if my sales closing rate is 20% and I need x number of sales to make my numbers for the month okay how many lead generations do you need to with a 20 percent success rate and that lead generation is going to kind of tell you what kind of marketing you need to get those leads right Mm -hmm. if if you don't need a lot then you don't need to spend a lot on marketing because you don't need a lot of leads with your what you hope your close rate to be on your sales. But if you need a ton of them because your close rate is only 10%, then maybe you need to look at TV or other avenues that's going to get that much market exposure to get the potential of that many leads. And so I, I don't think they, they don't drill it from below. They get so fixated on the offense of the football team that they don't, think about that because they've already got the marketing figured out and so forth before they even get to those kinds of elements and figure out and scratch their head. Well, why is it not working for my business? Yeah, you're, you're right. A lot of times the, the influence or the circle of influence for the, the solopreneur or small business owner, it's it's challenging because they see, hey, you know, so-and-so is on social media and they're doing great. Like, yes, right? Or Hey, Frick, I want to build a personal brand and I want to make $10,000 a month. I'm like, great. Okay. But let's think about how long did they take to get there? Yeah. Right. So th- that's one thing that they, they don't, they don't put that into the formula. So once you create the formula, okay, these are the metrics to achieve this goal or this outcome, right? So this is the outcome with these metrics. If I want to scale this, this outcome, 
then I will have to scale the metrics. Right. Right. So, so the, the, they're not looking at it from a mathematical standpoint. They're more, they're looking at it more from an emotional standpoint mm-hmm. and saying, Hey, you know what? It worked for so-and-so. It should work for me. And, or this is what's trending right now. Everyone is on TikTok. I need to do TikTok videos. Okay, cool. You want to do TikTok videos? You're going to need to dedicate X. We have to do X amount of TikTok videos a day. Wow. That's a lot of TikTok videos. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Right? Because TikTok is one of those. It's like trying to drink out of a fire hose. It's just like coming at you. Right? So an attention span for TikTok is, the last time I read it was like 1.7 seconds. Or I found somebody new on TikTok two months ago. I've known this person for two months. And, and so they've gotten to the status in two months. No, they've been at it for five years. You've only been aware of them for two months. And you're taking that into your mm-hmm. equation thinking, oh, they did it in two months, so I can do it in two months. No, it took them five years with lots of ups and downs, mm-hmm. maybe even lost some money before they finally... Were able to get themselves to that. Are you ready for that kind of path? And did you do enough digging to understand it took them five years to get to that point? And that's really, you know, you know, so what was adding value to an abundant value to our clients, we always go above and beyond. It goes back to whatever it takes. I understand, you know, that every business there's going to be challenges and I treat their business just like it was my own. Right. So I, I I really want to make sure that, Hey, we're doing right by not only the client, but also the customer because that translates into dollars and really walking them through the roadmap. And that's really important. Walking through the roadmap and say, Hey, you know what? These are, you know, the, the challenges that we're going to have here. So you understand this is how we're going to overcome that. If this doesn't, if we can't do pivot this way, we're going to pivot this other way. Just letting you know. So you understand where we're going, what are the challenges that we're going to have? And then, you know, what you're going to face in your business, right? So you're going to get an uptick and we want to make sure that the customer's emotional journey is touched upon okay. because a lot of, you know, a lot of times from a marketing standpoint, we don't talk about the emotional journey right. of the customer, the prospect. We're just like, hey, this is the customer journey. We need to do, you know, these are the steps. Okay, fine. We understand how they're walking through it, but we're not taking into account the emotion of each step and what they're feeling during that step. So we're creating lead magnet yep. and we're selling where we have them in a program and then now they're through the program and then we're going to sell them another program and we're going to sell them another program. So your, your business model is to keep this person here throughout for how many programs? Yeah. Right. So there's no exit, right? So it's just keep them in the program, right? Okay. So if, so just to understand, so we know, and you know, like, Hey, if you want to keep that customer in the program, Mm -hmm. We're going to have to have multiple programs. So we start to start seeding these programs. And, and that's where I found my, my clients to kind of fall short too, is that they, they're they thinking very short term and they're thinking about that, just that one time that the customer comes in as opposed to truly what is the life cycle of your customer over their mm-hmm. lifetime? How long do you hope to keep them? And when you're looking at the marketing dollars and branding dollars you're spending, look over that whole lifetime. Uh, because yes. you may spend not enough money in marketing because you're 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 looking at your your dollars in a very short term basis and short term financial results, as opposed to the lifetime where over the lifetime makes a lot more sense to spend a little bit more money in that customer capture. And getting them into your pipeline for a lifetime. And then maybe spend less dollars down the line to keep them in because you've already built up the brand, so to speak, with them because they're already way down the pipeline with you. Exactly. So when we're building the brand, we also, so in our conversation, we make sure we understand what is the, the cost of the product, right? What's the margin? Mm-hmm. For each product, so which which is the you know the number one sold product 
Is that me? Yes. I don't. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm just like, okay, this is, I didn't, I'm like, okay. I'm like, I must have clicked on something for. So we have to understand what are the top selling products? What are the highest grossing products? Where do you make the most profit out of which, prof, which product or service? Mm -hmm. Right. From a marketing standpoint, we, we have to understand which product or service that your customer is gravitating towards and which one is converting, you know, the most with these dollars. A lot of times, there's we call vanity products or services that a lot of folks are purchasing, but it's not yielding the revenue that the, the client will like, right? So we come in and we go, okay, you know what? We understand the creative. You're doing, and you're doing these tactics, but your strategy is off because you're trying to achieve this goal from a financial standpoint and you're marketing loss leaders mm -hmm. and you're not upselling so a, a, a higher ticket item right? right so whether it's you know restaurant whether it's you know a professional services whether it's an online business right so understanding that understanding the creative building the awareness the findability the reputation then the conversion and then how the, how that customer journey they're walking through or being pulled through that journey. Right. And now you're touching them throughout that dirt journey, and now they're excited about the next level, right? So, um, so yeah. So I mean, it's you know, branding and marketing is super exciting. It's really fantastic, right? right. I remember we worked on the. The, the Houston Dynamo, right? And the, the Houston Dynamo. So the challenge with when we work on the, with the Houston Dynamo is you're in a city that has a lot of sports options. It's not like, you know, a secondary city that doesn't have a professional team. Mm -hmm. We have multiple professional teams, everything from women's to men's to ice, you know, sports to collegiate sports that almost feel and look like professional sports. Yep. You have high school sports that look like professional sports. And they're sports all things. chasing the entertainment dollar market. Exactly, right? So then you have a sport at that time that even into America, came into the States, which is really, it's not a, it wasn't a large sport right. that Americans in general did, right? So Americans you know, baseball, basketball, football, right? So all the rest of the, the secondary sports, you know, it kind of touched on, but soccer or football, they didn't do that, right? So, and it wasn't as popular. So coming in is a challenge because now mm -hmm. you're talking to, you target to audience that probably, that definitely didn't grow up with it, right? So their their parents didn't grow up with, and if they did, they were either international, mm -hmm. clientele, right? So now you're talking about non-born Americans, right? So we, we we have to talk to them, and they already have a brand that they love, right? So like you're not gonna, it's gonna be very difficult to convince someone from Europe to abandon. Their <laughs> dynasty brand, right? For so it's so it's so there was a lot of challenges, right? And we 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 overcame those challenges very strategically, but we had to really spell it out. Like, hey, these are this is I know you want this audience. I get it, but it's difficult to convert someone who's like I am the FC United fan. And I can't be seen with anything else, right? Yeah, you have to co or convince, Chelsea, like convince them the power of the and versus the or, right? You don't have to choose between the two. You can be a fan of both. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, you know, we, what we did is, you know, we, we poured into the passion of soccer, mm -hmm. right? Football, mm -hmm. right? Football, right? So we poured into the passion of it. So if you love the, if you love the game and you love the passion of the game, then try us out, 
right? So, and then we showed a lot of the passion, right? So, and then, were, and then it was almost this, this FOMO, fear of missing out, that when folks didn't go to the game, they're like, oh, this is such an exciting game. And it's such an exciting, it was entertaining, right? So, and it was, it's, the strategy was definitely on point there. So, and we were able to drive. So it went from, you know, a, a modest 9,000 you know, butts in seats to 14,000 to 29,000. Mm-hmm. So it kind of grew the, the life expectancy of the account, right? So it was very strategic and, you know, pointing out like, hey, this is what we're going to be doing, right? Uh, and, um, and you have to, you know, it, in our country, it may not have this issue in other countries, you know, where football is so popular but with so many sports choices here you've got the game of football with a ton of scoring you got baseball with the potential of a lot of scoring in the game whereas soccer is kind of like hockey in that it's a lot of action without any goal scoring right you you tend to get a lot of two to one or three to two kind of games like you do with soccer Mm -hmm. right so you got to make it a lot more about the experience than you do. Oh, you got to have your eyes on the game all the time because you're going to miss a score because it happens so often. You get that instant gratification mm-hmm. from the game. Exactly, and and I mean, that's and why I think thing with your- soccer grew so well here in Atlanta with our team because the ownership saw it that way. Build a stadium that was capable of handing the Falcons and soccer and create a great experience behind the seats and the pricing of the food and so forth to make it a great destination, if you will, to come and have a great time and get entertained by the game of soccer as well as everything else that kind of surrounds it. And experience is really important with every business. It's like, what is the experience that my customer, my prospect is going to have. So you really have to paint that picture and tell them because it's that, you know, you're, you're adding that abundant value and that experience is really important because, you know, the, the positive experience, you know, everyone will talk mm-hmm. about like, hey, this was fantastic, right? But the negative experience, oh my God, it would, it, it would really like, it would create a file in your mind that is very difficult to extract. Mm-hmm. So even when you go to the hospital or clinic, like you already, you know, you walk in, you're not feeling well. And I, you know, I was talking to uh, a prospect the other day in the clinic. I said, you know, so when I walk into your clinic, I'm not greeted. And then when I, I'm, I'm not greeted immediately, but then when I see someone, they say sign you know, you put your name on the uh, clipboard. Right. I'm like, well, I had an appointment. So I have to put my name on the clipboard that you already know that I have an appointment for mm-hmm. at this time. Like, I'm not going to come here because I just want to hang out at the <laughs> clinic, right? So, so you already know that I have an appointment. And it's not like a hospital where there's multiple. It might, I'm not in an emergency right. room, right? So I've scheduled an appointment. There's probably 20 seats in this waiting room, mm-hmm. right? And there's not, you're not seeing 20 people. You're seeing maybe five or six people. I walk in, there was already a couple of people there. So I'm obviously the next person who has an appointment during this time, right? So you should know that I'm coming in. Mm-hmm. I don't have to tell you that, you know. And so the, you can the, greet the person and ask him, are you Mr. Smith? Yes, I'm Mr. Exactly. Smith. Great so, to see you. They have a seat. We'll be right with you. And then you, you're making your work. Experience. Yeah. So now my experience already started off like, why is this not, why, why you guys are not doing mm-hmm. this? And then, you know, at, at the end of it, you're going to, you know, or at the beginning, collect your money or the end, collect the money. So then, you know, depending on how the experience went, that, that emotional experience. So what I'm going to, what are you guys going to do to make sure that when I'm exiting, my emotional experience goes up. So now I'm, you know, my frustration turns into something else, right? And that's so, why I harp on my clients about, and, you know, when I go on other podcasts, I talk about it quite a bit, that value comes in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. And are you paying attention to that, right? 
if you're in a clinic, there is value with whatever true medical things that you provide to the person, but it's much more than that where value gets created from that experience, like you said. Yes. So, well, uh, unfortunately our time is coming to a close. Um, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, learn more about you or your business or anything of that nature, Fritz, what's the best way they can reach out to you and connect? So everyone can reach, you know, they can reach out on LinkedIn. So Fritz Colonnais. I think I'm one of the very few named Fritz on LinkedIn in, in in Texas, and he looks like this, right? Um, if you my hashtag is I know Fritz, so on Insta you can Instagram, you can send me a DM on on Insta, or you know go to retinamedia.com. That's retinamedia.com, and uh, just you know send an email over there. So. Um, but what I'd I'd like to do, if you have, if if it's okay with you, I, I'd like to offer um, your subscribers a a complimentary audit, okay, on their business, okay, right. So it, in in the value of adding abundant value, so we we do an audit, an online reputation audit, okay. right. So it's valued at a yeah. So if act, if you're listen, right? listening, take okay. advantage of it. So, and it's complimentary because you are on listening and subscribing to the podcast, right? Yeah. So, so one last question. When we ask this question to every one of our guests, and if I know you've been listening to the podcast, you probably know what's coming. So that question, Fritz, is what do the words generate your value mean to you? Oh, that, you know what? I've thought of I I man that is a it's always a great question always great to hear what people are gonna say. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why we ask it of everybody because we like to see what the that common kind of common thread is amongst everybody uh, when they hear those right. words. So, what it means to me is adding solutions and abundant solutions for the people around me, mm -hmm. whether it's friends, family, clients, and prospects, I want to make sure that when they interact with me, they walk away with, you know, a couple of pearls that help me throughout my, my life that I've learned that I, I can say, Hey, you know what? You don't have to do it this way. This is the way that I handle that situation. And it works for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what I, you know, kind of leaving the place better than where I, where it was at. Where is that? Because you added value. Exactly. Right? But bumps it up to a higher level. Yes. So that being said, uh, for the listening audience, uh, uh, I greatly appreciate you taking your valuable resource that's finite in nature, your time to listen to. Fritz and I's conversation. Hopefully you got Fritz, we call them golden nuggets on the podcast. You got some golden nuggets out of our conversation today that you can integrate into your life or into your business. Uh, that we've added some abundant value, if you will, to use Fritz's words uh, to your life or business. Uh, and all we ask is that you turn around and pay it forward. Right. If you got a lot out of this conversation, the way you pay it forward is by sharing it on your social media or through email or whatever to those that you think would also get value out of the conversation in their own lives. Uh, and that's how we create a ripple effect in the world. So before I leave, I want to highlight one thing uh, in a couple of weeks. We're doing a different kind of episode. We're bringing a panel discussion. I have bringing in five experts in leadership uh, in other areas to talk about spirituality in business. And hopefully you're going to walk away and scratch your head and go, wow, spirituality in business. And that's the point. We hope you tune in to, to hear things about, okay, what do you mean by spirituality? And how does one bring in spirituality in the business? And what are the benefits of bringing spirituality in the benefit? And we, we in the panel, uh, I had my coronation meeting with them yesterday. 
think now's the time for those type of conversations, and that's why we're doing this. Uh, so on March 28th, Thursday, that episode will release. We hope you'll tune in uh, and hear what the panel has to say uh, on the subject, and hopefully some golden nuggets came out of that conversation and something you might be able to use in your life or business. So I just wanted to highlight that before we leave. Uh, hit that subscribe button. We're here every Tuesday with great guests just like Fritz. Uh, to talk about their life stories, how they got to where they are today, uh, as well as their expertise in particular topics that could bring value to you. So we hope you'll tune in every week and hit that subscribe button. And in the meantime, when you're not listening to Hammers, uh, have a great day, have a great week, and we'll see you next time right here on the Generate Your Value podcast. Take care. Thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of the Generate Your Value podcast. If you find our conversations to be useful in your life, I invite you to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can find me online at Instagram at the underscore Zach dot Levy, Facebook and LinkedIn. For information on my coaching services, visit my website at www.generateyourvalue.com. You can also find me and my company on LinkedIn, Facebook, X, and Instagram. Simply search for Generate Your Value on those platforms. Once again, thanks for joining us for today's podcast, and we invite you to generate your value 